Welcome back to Entertainment Talk. Today we're here to do a little podcast we're going to call Trailer Talk because we're going to be talking about a bunch of different trailers today. Uh, I'm your host Matthew. Joining me today, my co-host is Robert. How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you doing today? Not too bad. Yep. Um, so yeah. You kind of came up with a little subtitle of like Trailer Talk. It's just a little kind of name, obviously. Um, I don't know if this will be like an ongoing series or whatever. We'll talk. Maybe we'll wait till like a bunch of trailers come out, and then we'll just talk about them all in all in one kind of big group, which is sort of what we're doing here today. Uh, I think we should just jump straight into some little trailers here. We've got. Uh, I'm not going to name them all. I'll just name them as we're going through them. Uh, we've got a couple of Black Widow trailers, of course, which is the start of Phase. Is it four, five? Yeah, Phase four. Phase four uh, of the MCU. Uh, of course, with Scarlett Johansson returning for Black Widow after Endgame and everything. Uh, what do you think of these uh, couple of trailers that we've had, or just the, the film overall? Uh, overall, I'm very interested. Mm. I'm a little bummed that these that the Black Widow solo movie hasn't come out sooner. Yeah. I mean, this is yeah. going to be a, a a time jump backwards, so this is going to be uh, chronologically after um, uh, Civil War, but before Infinity War. Right. Um, so this is one of those things that it, it should have come out a long time ago. I don't know why they pushed it back so far, uh, but it is what it is. So, um, But yeah, I've always been curious uh, about more of the backstory that they created for her for the MCU um, in that. Yeah. And then we're finally going to get a movie here soon. Yeah, I agree with the whole timing thing. Uh, both me, you, and some other people have kind of said, like, what what took this so long? The MCU's been running since, you know, 2008. And that sort of thing. She got introduced, I think, in Iron Man 2 uh, and that sort of thing. But mm-hmm. I, I part of me thinks, like, did they just have too many films to do between basically the start and the end game? Uh, and just kind of literally ran out of time to do this? Because they had, you know, all, all the characters you had to introduce for the uh, for the MCU and everything and obviously you had to do a Captain Marvel film, set her up, you had to do an Ant Man film and everything like that. So it sort of seems like at least from what I can what I'm reading from the situation, they kinda of maybe just I don't know, get, didn't get round to it, didn't just I, they just ran out of time kind of to do it. But then again if it if this was more integral to things uh pre sort of end game, post obviously Civil War and b- before Infinity War, uh they probably be, would have just push some of the films more forward and just put this in there somewhere but uh i'm i'm fairly excited for this film i'm excited to see um it seems like they're kind of setting up because she's got her sister in this hasn't she Mm -hmm. Uh, they they obviously introduced some of the family david harbour's in there he's very cool obviously from from stranger things and that um my guess would probably be and this might be just an obvious thing but i need to kind of say it anyway that they're gonna probably set up so so that this sister character is probably the new um black widow going like forward in the mcu uh, that's probably going to be like let, there'll be some sort of way as to like okay she gets set up because it's like a network of um I almost said Black Canaries uh, Black Widows um that they've kind of set up and for some reason we've only seen Scarlet's it is N- Natasha isn't it is her actual uh, mm-hmm. name they've only sort of set her up for some reason and now we get to find out more about this like network of them which is like a almost like a spy kind of thing. Um, so we'll see how that plays out but yeah that would be my guess is that they show us more about what this whole network is they introduce the sister and she kind of gets put in a position to where she's set up to be the next um, Black Widow do you think that that's probably what's going to happen? That's a good chance Um, I'm on the IMDB page now and what's really interesting is all the confirmed actors in it it looks like uh, William Hurt is going to be reprising his role as General Ross uh, they've got uh, Michelle Lee in it, who was in the Venom movie, but she's been in a ton of stuff. I'm going over her IMDb page here. Uh, she was in the You, Me, and Dupree. She was in The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Uh, she was in The Delivery Man, which was a short. She did an episode of CAS New York, uh, Blood and Bones, uh, Cold Fusion, Halloween Nights, uh, We uh, Mortal Kombat Le- Legacy, which was a TV series back in the day. Uh, so she's got a massive IMDb page, but they don't have her character list, which is interesting. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's a rumor that uh, Robert Downey Jr. is going to make an appearance in it. I mean, this see, is set back in time when he would be alive, so... Yeah, see, I think you could get away with that in terms of, like, sure, you've gave you've given his character the send-off, but this doesn't, like, undo all the emotional stuff of his send-off and... All that sort of thing. It's it's a way where like okay he was yeah still alive at this point and and whatever. 
Um, but uh, yeah, a way to kind of include him, I suppose, maybe one last time. I I don't know how many times you can revisit the whole like pre Infinity War, post Civil War. Well, I don't know how many times you can revisit that kind of timeline, but uh, or that uh, time point or whatever. Um, but this is another opportunity for them to kind of do that. So, um, and I, I don't have any worries about like, oh, Tony's going to overshadow Natasha in this film and it's going to be an Iron Man film. I don't really think that's going to happen too much. Because I remember when Spider-Man Homecoming was coming out and it was like, okay, Tony's clearly a mentor for Peter and he's going to like get him into the Avengers and all this sort of thing. And, uh, a lot of people worried about that. Like, okay, this is going to be basically Iron Man 4 and all this sort of thing. And that's not really what ended up happening. He was in the film when he needed to be. And everything like that. So I mean he's the like the big anchor of the whole MCU. So it's understandable that he makes appearances in like other films. Plus this is a connected universe anyway. So yeah. Yeah and uh, supposedly that opening scene where uh, in uh, Far From Home. Where uh, Peter Parker puts on the glasses and you hear the Edith voice. Mm -hmm. Supposedly um, Robert Downey Jr. recorded that whole script as a voiceover. But they decided not to use it for whatever reason. So Okay. All right, we'll see what uh, yeah, we'll see what Black Widow uh, brings in uh, May. Is it May first? Yeah, it's supposed to be early May. Right. So which will be see if there's like an I think, official release date. Right. I think it's May first. I think that's what they had at the end of the trailer. Today's sponsor is Kualu. If you'd like to get started with a domain name and a website today. Just click on the link in the show notes and that will take you over to Koalu to get started. They also have a live support chat system that you can use which is in the bottom right hand corner. So get started with a new website and domain name today with Koalu. Hey everybody, if you would like to get the ad free versions of all of our podcasts and support entertainment talk along the way. All you need to do is head over to patreon.com forward slash entertainment talk. Sign up either as a creator or as a Patreon. There's no difference there. That's just the option for either becoming a creator now or just staying as a patron for the moment. And then all you need to do is support us at the $1 level tier. That will get you access to all of the ad-free podcasts that we've done in in the past. And get you access to all the ad-free podcasts in that month as well. So it's a great way to support us on Entertainment Talk and to get rid of the ads and get your ad-free podcasts. You can also become a patron at the $3 level tier that gets you access to ad-free podcasts and allows you to redeem a review of a TV show or a film of entirely your choice. That's one per month for either a TV show or a film review which is at the $3 level tier. As always, thank you very much for listening. Back to the show. Yeah, speak it over, let's all right, move on from Black Widow to Morbius, a Marvel, not really MCU, but might be, but sort of could be. There's a bunch of Easter eggs in this trailer. Uh, what do you think of the trailer just overall? I was intrigued. Um, probably my favorite thing that I've seen. Are you familiar with a website called the Babylon Bee? I don't think I've ever heard of that, but okay. Yeah, it's a parody website. They basically make news articles. But they do it from like a comedy parody standpoint. Uh, they posted an article saying that uh, um, uh, Morbius fans outraged that the character actually looks like the comic book, which is hilarious. right, right? Because because pe- people always complain about like comic accurate yeah. looks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, obviously, Jared Leto jumping from the DC to the uh, Marvel uh, side is interesting. I did like uh, the the trailer. It looks like it's setting it up very well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm on the IMDb page as well because when I was looking the trailer, there was like that slow motion walking scene in a subway, and I was like, "Is that Matt Smith?" And so I get on the IMDb page, and I'm like, "Yeah, that is Matt Smith." Yeah, Doctor Who in the MCU. How about that? Yeah, <laughs> uh, but there are on on the IMDb page there are two really interesting things um, with all the stuff in the pre trailers talking about from the studio that brought you all the Spider Man movies. Uh, right, this looks yeah. like it's going to be, if nothing else, it's going to be in the Spider-Man universe because the two actors that are listed on here is a, uh, it's rumored, so it's not official yet. The J.K. Simmons is reprising his role as J. Jonah Jameson, uh, but the really, really interesting thing is that Michael Keaton, who played the Vulture in the Homecoming series, is listed on the IMDb page. Yeah, he so was at we, the uh, end of the trailer. Yeah, so. so we might be getting a uh, a soft setup for a Sinister Six movie. I hope so, because I've heard about that 
since I was born. Uh, well, for, for like the longest time I've heard about, oh, Sinister Six and all this and that. I just make it happen, finally. Yeah. Uh, and if you yeah. uh, live in the States and already have uh, Disney+, Plus, uh, they have all their back catalog. So definitely check out the uh, Spider-Man uh, cartoon show from the early 90s. They did a lot of Sinister Six episodes and... Uh, you should be getting in the UK, getting uh, Disney Plus here in a couple of months. So definitely yeah, check that out. Tuesday, the 31st of March. So. Yeah, it's not like you're checking it out or anticipating <laughs> it, quivering and shaking and wanting to see uh, the Mandalorian or anything. Right, right. And uh, some other stuff. Yeah, they've got the, the I want to check out the 90s X-Men, the 90s Spider-Man, the 20, I think it's 2016, the, the newer Spider-Man cartoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, go through Star Wars properly with Rebels and Clone Wars, Mandalorian, and there was one other thing, but I've forgotten. But that's already plenty yeah, of stuff. Absolutely so. start with the Mandalorian first. If nothing else, it'll make context for all those baby Yoda memes that you've been seeing online everywhere. Right, right. Oh, but yeah, yeah that was such a good series. I, I was, I really enjoyed the Mandalorian. Cool. We're all, we'll, yeah, we're all getting a uh, season two, which is great. Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, but back to uh, Morbius, of course. Um, I think there's a way you could do it where, because obviously they've wanted to keep the Venom verse um, separate from the MCU. I'm not a whole, I'm not a fan of like this idea of the Venom verse. But if they can find a way to where, let's say separately in these films, okay, Venom was separate, had no Spider-Man. Venom two, I still suspect will be separate, no Spider-Man. Morbius, the same thing, probably a Carnage film, and then there's someone else I think is supposed to have a film. If you can do it to where, okay, they're all Sony films in quotes, they don't have any Tom Holland Spider-Man, but to where you you basically use those films to do the origin stories of these characters, so like Venom, Morbius, the ones I've already just mentioned, uh, and obviously Venom 2, probably Carnage 2 or whatever. If you can do it so where they're separate and they're not officially in the MCU, but still connected to uh, Michael Keaton's, is Vulture, isn't it, that he plays? Mm-hmm. Uh, connected to him, he's obviously already made an appearance, he is the connection at the moment. Uh, sort of thing. If you can do it to where it's that, and then when you get back to Spider-Man Three, and then you can everything that you've built between you know Venom Two, Morbius, Ve- First Venom, all that sort of thing, you can connect that back to Spider-Man Three, and obviously have that connect back through uh, Vulture, and then have that push forward to a Sinister Six. I think there's a way you could make that work, and I would be if that works the way I think it could, and w- want it to in a certain way. Uh, I think that could be could be pretty successful because I know everybody's got this like oh there's the whole you know Sony Spider Man we don't want that baggage sort of thing but if you if you could do it to where you're only using the Sony movies or Sony films to where you're setting up these characters and then when you tie it back to Tom Holland Spider Man you know the main hero type tie all the villains back to him you cut that back into the MCU and you're allowed to hopefully use all those characters you can then build Sinister Six from that I think you could do it that way what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. And going back to the 90s Spider-Man, Morbius is in that a lot. They did uh, a cool. Secret War series in that. Um, and then with Morbius, you get other characters, like you can get Black Cat in there. Uh, you can get other characters in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm really intrigued. Uh, it just lists a summer 2020, so it is coming out this year, but I don't mm-hmm. know when exactly. All right. But All right. yeah, Jared Leto looks like he's enjoying being Morbius a lot more than he enjoyed being Joker. Yeah, I'm already. I don't. I don't like harking on the whole. Uh, I almost said Joaquin Phoenix. That would have been a big mistake. J- Jared Leto's uh, Joker because I've already said before. I, I didn't like him. I didn't think it was. It was very good. I don't need to repeat that over and over. But I'm already kind of more sold on him as Morbius than what I am as him on at him as Joker. Um, but if you're going to include this whole like, uh, see, I'm not really a fan of like vampire stuff but if you can make it to where it edges more towards horror and then like comic booky sort of thing a little bit in the same way as what Swamp Thing did but not quite not as violent because it won't be I don't think as violent uh, as Swamp Thing was but if you can do that similar like um horror comic booky sort of tone connect that together I think it could work pretty well so because I mean that they they initially said like okay Tom Holland Spider-Man is going to be separate from this Venom verse the Venom verse is going to be all Sony and it's gonna they're gonna keep spider-man away they've obviously now got some intention of crossing them over if they've got uh michael keaton's vulture in there otherwise why would he be in there so yeah and i'm uh going <laughs> over the trailer again they did have a poster of spider-man in one of the shots up, but yeah. yeah yeah um yeah the, the, the really funny thing with that is that's actually the i know the suit of that spider-man is the sam raimi one the toby mcguire mm-hmm. one 
But that's the that's the PS4 Spider Man because that pose that he's doing is the loading screen pose, and mm-hmm. you can you can get the that Sam Raimi suit in that game I think for free. Um, so I don't know what that's hinting towards, but because uh, you kind of got three universes in one, you've got the, this little Morbius Venom verse, you've got me- uh, an, ag- an acknowledgement of the Sam Raimi suit and the Spider Man PS4 game, which is all Sony. But uh, yeah. Interesting. That I, I see that a bit more as an Easter egg, but then again, there is the definite crossover connection with uh, Michael Keaton's Vulture. So mm-hmm. we will see what this all builds to. And you never know where, when and where they're going to hide Easter eggs. Um, something mm-hmm. that just came out a couple of days ago, and someone was doing a rewatch of Thor Ragnarok. Okay. And in that sequence where uh, Valkyrie is jumping from ship to ship, you know, knocking things over, blowing blowing up, uh, they did a freeze frame on one of the the action shots, and there's actually a ship from the Eternals, which is coming out soon, in that sequence, and nobody noticed oh. it until like a couple of days ago. Okay, that's cool. So yeah, it, it might just be a nod, it might be an Easter, it might be an Easter egg, or it might be actual a thing. So you never know. So yep, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, let's move on to Ghostbusters. Uh, let's get a, an overall feel. Look, okay, how do we feel about Ghostbusters now? There's obviously the the three films. There's the two originals, and then there's the female 2016 reboot, which nobody apart from me seemed to like. Uh, like I, I wouldn't say it's like you know one of my favorite films, one of the best films, but I certainly liked it. I think. Um, what what are your thoughts and feelings on uh, Ghostbusters at the moment? Uh, I'm cautiously optimistic. I have not seen uh, the 2016 version. Okay. Um, it just, there was just too much noise around it for me to really get an unbiased opinion on it. Um, I'm I'm definitely curious about the movie because if you go into the trailer, uh, the name of the farm that they go to has the same name from the guy that built the skyscraper in New York for the first film, okay. whose name I can't remember off the top of my head, uh, but he was the one that built the the tower to basically bring in Zool, and he owns the farm that they move to in the care in the uh, trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, the running theory right now is that uh, Egon Spengler bought that farm as kind of a research project. And the kid that's kind of the main uh, character that looks like is his grandson. Cause that they say that in the trailer that uh, it's an old farm that his grandfather had and they have an actual ghost trap in the trailer. Um, so that's kind of the running theory now. And of course, Paul Rudd's in it, which you got to love Paul Rudd. Of course, um, yeah. Have you seen um, Living With Yourself on Netflix? I, I need to do that, but I just haven't seen it It's pretty yet. short, which is good. But uh, yeah. yeah, really, really good show. And there's, t- yeah. and there's two of him, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's also interesting that they show, um, in the trailer, they show first off that the kid doesn't know anything about the Ghostbusters mm-hmm. past from the 80s. Which is also kind of intriguing in that something that was that big in terms of, you know, assuming you lived in that universe, you would think everybody would know about it. And then it's right. only two genera- generations removed that they don't. And that Paul Rudd is showing one of the kids, you know, on YouTube, you know, things from back in the day. Um, and then we've got, um, you know, the, the emergence of ghosts and we got the return of the uh, Ghostbusters vehicle. And we see in the trailer um, all the the uniforms back. So, plus it's uh, the son of the original director is doing the movie. So okay. that obviously means a lot more. He, the movie family. means a lot more to him than anything else. Mm-hmm. And with yeah. the um, Harold Ramis passing away, uh, this would be a great nod as a you know a final farewell to his character. Yeah. So we'll just have to see when it comes out mm-hmm. if it's a good movie or not. But I'm definitely. Um, I'm op- cautious. Like I said, I'm cautiously optimistic that it's going to be a real good movie. It could easily just be a complete stinker, but it's clear that it's it's being made, you know, with love of the franchise. So, yeah, I'd agree with with everything you're saying. Um, yeah, I'm interested to see what they do in terms of bringing back a couple of uh, previous characters and obviously integrating these new ones. Um, I don't suspect that there'll be any winks or whatever to the 2016 one because they they, they kind of want everyone to forget about that one. I think, but uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what they do. I've never been like a massive Ghostbusters sort of fan, but I I recognize it as a really great sort of property and everything. So uh, there's that. Yeah. It's just, it's just something it, it's more more kind of before my time. So I've never you know didn't have that kind of 
whole growing up thing with it. But uh, yeah, I can still appreciate it for what it is. I'm excited to see what they do with uh, you know a modern version of um, of Ghostbusters. Although we kind of sort of yeah. just had one, but like four years ago. And then the original cast from the '84 series are all reprising their roles as their character. Because on the mm-hmm. IMDb page, it does list Annie Potts as Janine Melnitz, and it does list Sigourney Weaver as Dana Barrett. And then Dan Aykroyd, uh, Bill Murray, and Ernie Hudson are all listed as their characters. Now, I don't know if they actually have any interaction in the movie because in the trailer it shows like a YouTube clip of their characters from the 84 movie. Okay. So that might just be crediting them as that. So I don't know if they're going to be in the movie or not. Um, obviously, in the, uh, um, 1980, in the uh, 2016 movie, they were all in there, but they were different characters. I think... Right. Uh, um, uh, Dan Aykroyd was like a cab driver and Ernie Hudson was like one of the characters uncles or something. Mm-hmm. And then I think they killed Bur- Bill Murray off. I vaguely ish remember hearing that, but I don't know if that's an actual thing or not. So, okay. I won't tell you if that's the case, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what they do with Ghostbusters. And hopefully this leads, I this isn't just like a one-off kind of thing, obviously with them putting the kids in this, hopefully they're building towards making them the future. So mm-hmm. we shall see in the summer. Wonder Woman is up next. Uh, we got a sort of trailer recently. Um, what uh, What's your uh, feelings on Wonder Woman at the moment? Well, I was a big fan of the first film in that I think Me it too. did justice to the character. Mm-hmm. Pardon the pun. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm definitely more intrigued with the second Wonder Woman movie than I am with the second Captain Marvel movie. I think that they clearly want to do right by the franchise and that they clearly have a good style in place visually it looks really really cool it's one of those movies that you know it is another period piece so it's set in 1984 thus the uh, wonder woman 84 logo Mm -hmm. Um, and this is a era that i lived through in the states and so a lot of the visual points are just like yep that's right yep that's right yep that's right so it makes the movie a lot easier to see when it's set in the time period and you can say you know that's pretty accurate Okay. Uh, there's a lot of characters uh, that they're introducing. They're introducing Cheetah, so, and Kristen Wiig is doing that. So I'm kind of curious to where she's going to take that character. Hmm. Yeah. And the uh, – go ahead. Sorry. The first time I saw Cheetah, I think, was in um, one of the LEGO DC games. So, yeah, uh, yeah be very interested. In I've, I've seen, like, comic book panel pictures of that character not not like in an actual comic book but like people have posted photos online and stuff so I've, I've seen outside of the lego form what that character looks like and now this is obviously going to be is this the first live action version because mm-hmm. i don't recall there, there being too much of an appearance uh, live action wise before uh, i'm not familiar enough with the it's uh, at least been a um, long time if it has so there was a 60s run of wonder woman um, that was very famous. I don't know if that character ever made an appearance or not. I'm not that familiar with it. Okay. Uh, the talking, only real. Are you talking about animated... the Linda Carter thing? Yeah, the Linda Carter run. Okay. Right. Um, I know that in one of the uh, um, Justice League movies, Cheetah was in it for a little bit. It was the one where uh, the Legion of Doom, you know, stole Batman's uh, contingency plans against the Legion, and they sicked everybody, you know, on individual members of the justice league and so cheetah was technically a part of that but mm-hmm. that was a, more of a delusion of uh a wonder woman's mind than an actual cheetah cheetah so cool uh i'm not one for doing too many hashtags but seriously hashtag release the snyder cut uh that's what I'll say <laughs> on that. uh so because that, that's what out of the hashtags that i see out there that's one of the more realistic ones let's say that mm-hmm. i've seen so yeah um, cool. Let's move on from Wonder Woman two. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to see the film and to see. It, it feels like the moment with the DCEU. I know I know I've given it a lot of flack and a lot of other people have as well. That they're doing this thing as to where okay, there's clearly not much crossover going on, but they're all still in the same universe. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and we'll talk about one particular one in a minute. Uh, James Bond is the next trailer that we've got. Um, what do you, what do you, how do you feel about James Bond at the moment? Uh, I'm kind of neutral on it. I mean, I fell off the James Bond bag when, bag, uh, bandwagon a long time ago. Um, and I know a lot of movie nerds that have, like, massive fights over who's the best James Bond. Um, you know, I'm more of a fan of, uh, the, like, GoldenEye, the, that run. I thought was really good. I don't dislike Daniel Craig. It's just that 
it got to the point to where I just never had any real interest in it anymore. So hmm. okay. I've, I vaguely just remember Spectre. I mean, I have seen it. It was on like a, a free weekend for whatever pay movie channel it was on. And so I've seen it, but I don't really care. Right. Right. Uh, I mean, in terms of spy agents that have the initials JB and my interest, not really quite, not quite James Bond, not quite Jason Bourne. Everybody knows it's Jack Bauer, but uh, anyway, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, I've kind of enjoyed the last couple of James Bonds. I do think it's time just to move on to a new James Bond. Daniel Craig knows that everybody knows that. And this will, I'll be, if this isn't Daniel Craig's last film, I'll be very, very surprised considering, uh, the comments he gave last time about doing another one. Uh, by the way, just for those of you who want a little maybe list of uh, potential James Bond characters, I, I did do a podcast a couple of months ago. Uh, I think I think it's called something like nine nine actors who could play James Bond. Just search for James Bond on the website; you should be able to find it. And if you can't, let me know, and I'll send that to you. Um, but in terms of your, who would you like to play uh, James Bond next? Uh, I think Idris Elba would be a really mm. interesting choice. He's got a yeah. lot of presence. He's got a lot of gravitas. Uh, he's got a great voice. I think he could definitely command the screen. Definitely. Um, has a weird choice. I would like to see uh, Chris Hemsworth do it. Okay, uh, just, that could work. Just to be completely out there. Um, outside of that, I'm trying to think of what actor I would like to see in that role. I mean, there's a ton of actors that could do really good in that role. Um, mm. But outside of that, I mean, nobody really jumps to mind outside of like some weird crossover thing. Like any of the Avengers cast cross over into that role for one thing, that'd be kind of funny. Yeah. Um. Uh. But yeah, nobody really specific jumps out outside of Idris Elba. I think would make great James Bond. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I agree as well. I think with Chris Hemsworth, you could also not make it a comedy film, but just inject a little bit of comedy. Yeah, lighten it up because da- Daniel Craig's is not saying he's, but I like Daniel Craig and all that. But his ones have been quite serious and it might just be a little bit of a fresh take to just have someone a little bit more comedic in there again not not make it like a rush hour or something but yeah uh, yeah um daniel craig is a bit dour in that so mm-hmm. he's great but uh yeah just a, a little bit of a change of tone might uh help and freshen some things up so that's coming out on april 2nd i think so um look out for that which is a month before uh, black widow which we've just talked about so mm-hmm. uh speaking of one of the transitions we wanted to make to a dc film harley quinn now i've actually written down harley quinn instead of birds of prey and that just tells you <laughs> the kind of marketing for this film um because i kind of I, I as i was writing these down i was like oh yeah the harley quinn like literally thought the harley quinn trailer and it's of course birds of prey and the uh emancipation of harley quinn i'm not gonna write that in the title when i review this film um because i am planning to see it and review i'm i think i'm probably just gonna write like birds of prey and harley quinn or i don't know but uh yeah a a silly kind of long title but uh what do you think of um this film so far Uh, well they're definitely pushing the margot robbie aspect of it because she was pretty much the only good thing in suicide squad Mm-hmm. And I yeah. give complete respect to her for her training in that because she did all those stunts, um, and she, you know, she pushed herself to the limit to be able to do a lot of that stuff. So like all the backflips and all the, you know, running along walls and all the uh, um, rope uh, um, stuff that you saw, that was all her doing. Absolutely. That. I think it's cool. Yeah, I forget what it's called. It's ba- I've seen it as as like a yoga training to where it's called aerial yoga. To where that scene in the, where she's in the jail cell and she's hanging on the strips of fabric. Oh, that's not upsetting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um, that's actually called aerial yoga. And she did a lot of that to get training for that. So, And she's obviously the big name in that. Most of the people that are in that trailer obviously haven't you know, had her presence in that. But it's still a possibility. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I do think it's probably going to be much more of a... Uh... Harley Quinn film than the Birds of Prey film. There's two mistakes that they've made. One is with... I mean, you can put Harley Quinn in this film. That's perfectly fine. There's no Batgirl. Batgirl's not even set up or cast for this film. Um, And the ideal thing to have done would have... If they were still trying to connect this universe in some sort of way. Again, I still think it's the same universe, but there's just nowhere near as much crossover. If you do the Batman first... Do it to where the end of that film maybe has a post credit scene with Barbara Gordon becoming Batgirl. Then you could do Birds of Prey and Harley Quinn and put that version of Batgirl, who you then set up at the end of Batman, um, into this film. But Batman's not coming out till next year, and this is coming out next month, so you can't do that. 
So. Yeah, and it's not like they haven't gotten big names for this movie. I mean, they've got uh, mm, Mary Elizabeth yeah. Winstead playing Huntress. Uh, you would recognize her. She was in Ten Cloverfield Lane. She was in uh, the fourth uh, Die Hard movie, uh, Live Free or Die Hard. That was the one with Justin Long. Uh, she was in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. She's been in a ton of stuff. So, you know, they've got people for it. They've got uh, Rosie Perez is in it. Ewan McGregor is playing back Black Mask in it. That's pretty um, cool. Yeah, uh, they've got uh, Journey Smollett-Bell playing uh, Dinah Lance. She's been in a ton of stuff. She was in uh, uh, Lovecraft Country, which is a TV series. She was in Sophia the First, Underground, True Blood, Parent Herd. Uh, she was in the Defenders TV series as uh, Lisa Tyler. Um, so that was interesting as well. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just everything front and center has been uh, um, Margot Robbie. So Yeah, which in a way makes sense for marketing. You know, everybody liked her from... Suicide Squad, like you said, and she was obviously the best thing out of that film. Uh, Margot, Margot Robbie's a big actress uh, and that sort of thing. But when you make a film that's supposed to be a bit about the birds of prey, you want to market them as well. Um, yeah. But maybe there'll be some sort of way in the film that they use Margot's Harley to kind of bring in the birds of prey. Because you've already had Harley Quinn in, introduced in this universe. And so uh, maybe they'll just they'll kind of use Harley Quinn to introduce the birds of prey because like i said it doesn't even it doesn't really feel like a birds of prey film given the fact that i've written down harley quinn instead of birds of prey but uh yeah we'll see how it all pans out uh next month actually is that the, that's the 7th of february isn't that something uh, like? let me double check on that i think it is but uh that's just under a month away so we'll see uh how all that goes uh and that's all of the films that we got written down for trailers uh i think this this podcast was a pretty good idea it's a way to kind of just bunch because you know trailers are fairly short and we talk, we can talk about things within like a couple of minutes or whatever. Uh, is it, is a good way for us to kind of combine just a bunch of different properties and trailers and just talk about them all in one kind of a uh, short-ish podcast, I think. So um, yep. we'll possibly do it again in the future. I don't know when. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be for every trailer that comes out because uh, we're not interested in everything. Yeah, but, I see uh, is this as like a, a gap filler. Like we do the um, gaming podcast on a weekly basis Mm -hmm. and then we'll randomly throw in like a tv podcast of what we're watching you obviously do like 97 other podcasts but if we have like a week (laughs) or two to where you know it's down a little bit we can just throw this in and talk about what's coming out so yeah yeah, i am on the website it does list february 2nd uh 7th i'm sorry february 7th (laughs) but that specifically says usa so i don't know if it's releasing at a different time in the uk okay well, we shall find out in a couple of weeks. Um, cool. So what did you all think, you listener who's listening to this, uh, what did you think of all these trailers? Is there any other trailers you want our thoughts on? Um, which of these films are you most and least excited for? There's lots of different things you could uh, email us about and uh, give us feedback for. You can send that in to matthewentertainmenttalk.org, Twitter, eTalkUK. You can tweet us as well, of course. Uh, there's a contact page and there's also information in your show notes. So use what's available to you. Get in contact. Let us know what you think. Uh, not just about this show, but uh, all of the other different podcasts that we've got as well. Let us know what you think of everything that we do and of these trailers. Um Cool. Uh, just to give our quick um, thing on this, which out of these ones that we just mentioned, which one are you? I don't want you to like rank all of them, but which one are you most, and which one are you least excited for? Uh well, I'm definitely like I said before, I'm cautiously optimistic about the Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably going to go see Birds of Prey just because I'm curious about it, and I am a huge fan of Margot Robbie. Um, I'm definitely going to go see Black Widow because that is part of the MCU. And it's one of those films that, like like I said before, it should have been out a few years ago. But I'm right. definitely going to go support it. Um, Morbius ticked my interest a little bit. You know, we'll see where it goes from there. Obviously, I need to rewatch the trailer and uh, double check on all the Spider-Man stuff. But mm-hmm. if they do part put it as part of like the official MCU, or at least in part of, you know, with uh, Tom Holland's Spider-Man, which is what it. it kind of has to be the fact that uh, uh michael keaton is part of the trailer yeah i'm really curious as to some of the characters like i want to know what matt smith character is going to be and we'll go from there 
Um, but you know, that's not going to be out for a while. It says summer 2020. I'm thinking if they don't have a date on it yet, it's probably going to be like maybe July 4th weekend, which would be a big weekend for it. Mm -hmm. Because if you go back and back and back in history, the, uh, Sam Raimi, uh, the first Spider-Man was opened on July 4th weekend. So that'd be kind of a neat little nod to it. Hmm. It's clearly, if you look at the trailer, there's clearly enough post-production work done with the CGI to where it's pretty close to be done so Mm -hmm. we'll just go from there i think for me just on the level of the potential connections with spider-man tom holland and the mcu i'm most excited for morbius Uh, i'm very excited to see what they do with wonder woman and black widow i think the one i'm least excited for is probably james bond just because uh again no like bad blood with with um uh daniel craig i'm just kind of ready to move on to a new bond and i know that this is going to be hopefully his last one or uh, you know probably his last one but uh, it's like another one for me to go and see with him in it, but I'm just ready to kind of move on to another one. Uh, Ghostbusters, I'm interested to see how that's going to work with potential future films and how they're going to kind of, you know, move that forward. Uh, Black Widow, I'm excited just to see if if and how and in what way they use this like Black Widow network to set up a new Black Widow. And uh, Harley Quinn, just to see the balance, I suppose, between all the characters there. And uh, if they, if that film finds some sort of way to set up Batgirl in some kind of way, um, and that's pretty much all of them. So, yeah. So, kind of a side note: if they did actually make a Batgirl or a Batwoman movie, who would you like to see in that? Um, more for Batgirl. Yeah. Um, who could be a good Batgirl? I don't really know off the top of my head. There's a lot of different actresses who could probably do that. Um. So I, I, I couldn't really tell off the top of my head. Um, I mean, some, someone I've, I think I've spoken about before is maybe like Yvonne Strahovski, mm-hmm. who is in, uh, who's currently in Handmaid's Tale. She was in 24 Live Another Day. Um, and a couple she was of in uh, Chuck, for if you remember that Chuck, series. Chuck, yeah. And Dexter, I think, for a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's, off the top of my head, and kind of on the spot, that's the person I'd pick. I don't know if she's a good idea, like comic book-wise, I don't really know, but uh, that's who I'd pretty much go for. So... Um, Cool. So uh, who would you maybe pick for uh, Batgirl? Uh, it would depend on the time frame. If you went with mm. her actual Batgirl character, I'd like to see uh, Julie McNiven. Uh, she's been like small roles in a lot of different stuff. Uh, she had a semi-recurring role on Supernatural, which I know you haven't seen. Uh, she had a recurring role for half a season on Stargate Universe. Um, if you went with like an older character, um, more of the Oracle route, I would definitely like to see like Christina Hendricks. Uh, she did uh, Mad Men, yeah. and uh, she's Good on uh, Good Girls right now. Mm-hmm. I, she, I think, would kind of bring a little interesting take to that. Yeah, she might She might be good for that. Uh, cool, we did have an email. I don't know if it was a good idea to put this email in this podcast, but I'm just going to read it anyway, because <laughs> why not? Um, it, says, uh, it says from Luke, says, Hey Matt, loved your Witcher podcast. Thank you very much. Uh, and the way you release them, I'm assuming he's talking about because it was a binge model style thing. Mm-hmm. Are you consi- are you considering doing a podcast marathon for something else? Not anytime soon because that's quite a big undertaking, and uh, it did take me the whole day. I enjoyed it a lot, you know, The Witcher was great and all that sort of thing, and you can go listen to those uh, podcasts. But um, I don't know how many times a year I can do that. And there was some talk on, uh, I think IGN did an interview with. I'm not sure if it was Lauren, the actual showrunner, or someone else involved with the show, said that the show won't be back till 2021. Um, I was con- Now, I'm not promising anything. This isn't me announcing or promising anything. This is just me sharing an idea. If I did it for Stranger Things... Now, if Stranger Things comes out and it's a week's gone by and you go, OK, Matt, where's your podcast marathon? It just means I didn't do it. Um, I'll probably review Season 4 of Stranger Things like I did with Season 3 because it's a very, very good show. But that's the other show that I was possibly considering doing that for. Can't promise anything, not announcing anything, not saying, like, look out for it when it comes out. Um, but I, I don't know. Uh, obviously, Witcher Season 2, I'm probably going to do the same thing for. I hope it comes out a bit earlier in the year just because that was really close to Christmas and everything and uh, close to, like, when we were trying to close out for the year. And stuff again, really enjoyed it and all that sort of thing. But it was just I, I would prefer it a little bit earlier in the year. But uh, at the moment, um, I I just I don't have any other plans in terms of doing a podcast marathon kind of thing because that is uh, a bit of an undertaking. So, um, 
yeah, that's uh, my, I guess, mini announcement on that. Not really announced anything per se, but that's my uh, update on that. So, because I did consider that myself, like when I when I'd finished doing the Witcher podcast, I kind of thought, okay, could I do this for something else? And uh, nothing particular came to mind. So, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, Stranger Things would make the most sense with that. Obviously, you're not announcing that, but mm-hmm. I mean, there's very as much as there is on like Netflix and Hulu and whatnot. There's very very few shows that would actually command that kind of attention. Yeah. Obviously, uh, uh, The Good Place is shutting down, which yeah, I know you're bummed about. Anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know you're bummed about that, but I'm I'm actually cool with it because it's the writer saying, this is our story, this is our story ending, mm-hmm. and then that's it. It's not and getting it... drug out like they did with Lost um, or any other show that's gone way too long. Okay. Um, as much as I am a fan of the earlier uh, seasons of Supernatural, the fact that that show went 15 seasons is insane. <laughs> and the way they wrote it, they kind of yeah. basically ended it at five, and then they went ten more. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, some shows go on far too long. I mean, you think of the shows that are still going on, like uh, uh, Grey's Anatomy has gone on for ever. I remember getting into kind of a discussion with it with a couple of coworkers back in 2008, and that show's still wow. going on. And so it wasn't even like died. the first. <laughs> it wasn't even the first season. It was like season four or five hmm. back in 2008. You'd actually have to check. And then obviously, like the CSIs go on forever, and then spin off. And uh, the NCIS is still going on for some unknown reason, and that's like a 20 year season show. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. So I'll I'll decide. I'll tell you all when I decide something. But at the moment, no podcast marathon planned for the Stranger Things. Not that it's gonna, gonna come out anytime soon because we just had season three. But uh, I will at minimum I will probably review season four. Um, so uh, just just wait and see. So it's, it's a little while off, but uh, just wait and see. Uh, you can find all the other content that we've got, of course, on EntertainmentTalk.org. Lots to uh, listen to, lots to check out, so please consider doing that. Uh, if you want to support the podcast and support what we do here at Entertainment Talk, there's a few different options for you. Uh, Patreon, of course, please check out the $1 and $3 level tier uh, that we have. Uh, Amazon affiliate link, if you shop on Amazon, you can give us a small cut of what you spend, but it doesn't cost you anything extra, which is always good. Uh, a couple of free options, word of mouth, of course, please tell your friends, family, people that you know about all the content that we do, the website and the iTunes feeds all that sort of thing um share them on social media everything like that of course social media is a very uh where all the talk is happening and is at or whatever uh so you can share them all on there um if you uh use the itunes feeds please rate review and subscribe rate review and subscribe sorry to those or the ones that you're using anyway uh that will help us out as well uh please consider choosing one of those options to uh, support what we're doing here on entertainment talk uh last thing video games if you want to watch us play different vi- uh, different video games me and david stream on twitch robert streams on mixer uh look out for let's play sundays and look out for modern warfare mondays uh mondays 4 p.m uk time please uh try to be there uh if you can if not it'll be uploaded to the website so have a look out for that it uh, didn't quite come to plan this weekend, th- this week, sorry, so I'm not going to be uploading that particular Let's Play because it didn't really end up as a Let's Play. It was just a laggy video, so I don't think anybody really wants to see that. But anyway, thank you all very much for listening, and we'll see you on whatever we do next. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.